so uh, now let's start with the another concept of array okay so uh, what is an array array is basically uh, you can say one kind of data structure okay so what is the meaning of data structure like in memory there are some ways to uh, store the data okay so in your upcoming semester you will study in detail that uh, there is a different subject as data structure so in that you will study uh, very uh, in deeply but for now uh, just understand that array, array is a data structure uh, or you can say in c programming terms it is a one kind of data type which can store similar type of data okay now what is the meaning of similar type of data uh, similar type of data means uh, like if we are declaring uh, integer so the what is the meaning of integer a so a can store only integer type of value if we declare float b means it will uh, b will only store float type of value okay uh, so in array what we can do we can store uh, in a continuous manner now what is the meaning of continuous like whenever we are writing any code and we are taking any values and we are storing in memory so there is no guarantee that where the value will be stored okay how program will store wherever it will find out any free space randomly it will store it okay but this is not the case with array because whenever we are going to work with array we can store the values in a continuous manner continuous means exactly one after another so now let's suppose that you have your computer or, or your laptop your mobile phone and the memory is almost full uh, and uh, there is no contiguous memories available or you can say that there is um, some memory is available but they are not in serially or not in contiguous manner so in that case you can't execute your programs of array so for uh, operating with array uh, we should need what some contiguous memory location okay now what is the benefit of this for example you want to store the database of a student you want to store the all the roll numbers of 10 student you want to store all the marks of physics of this 10 students so what we know that roll number is same means if it is a integer value it is, this integer value is same for everyone and the roll number can be different so we can take uh, one array and then we can store contiguously okay and um, there are also some like uh, benefits as well as some drawbacks of array also because uh, drawback is that uh, as i told you that if there is not sufficient memory then you can't operate with array okay so now let's start with array and see how to write uh, or what are the main parts of any array so array declaration array initialization and array accessing so whenever we are going to code uh, or we are uh, doing any program of array first of all you have to declare means array declaration then you have to initialize okay uh, and then initialization means you have to give the values okay and then array accessing now for operating with array you have to access the array so let's start with a very basic example where we are just uh, giving some values to the array okay so this is uh, the main function and now you can write integer n 10 what is the meaning of this line meaning is that we are declaring an array of integer type the name of the array is n with the size of 10 okay so this is the declaration part this is the declaration part 
and now we are taking other values which is needed so or i equal to 0 i less than 10 i plus plus so this is the this is what this is the initialization here we declare the array now what we want we want to initialize the array means we are starting from the value 100 for i equal to 0 i less than 10 because the size is 10 i plus plus so nf 0 is 0 plus 100 means the first value will be 100 then 101 then 102 like that and always remember array indexing is start from 0 so we can say the size of the array is 10 and indexing is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You can say indexing or you for a or a more generic time, you can say the position. Okay, it starts from the zero. So this is for the initialization. And now you have to access the elements for printing it. So again, we are executing another loop. And J, comma, N, K. Return zero. C. So, uh, elements are printed. So, 101 to 109. Because the size of the array is 10, and by this loop, we are initializing the values. First value is 100, then it is increasing by 1. And then in this loop, what we are doing? We are just printing the values of the array. It means 101, 102, uh, like that. Okay. Now, uh, here, this is the declaration. And here, we are just writing this loop for initialization. But there is also one method for initialization. You can also write like that, like in n n. Then you can also write like that. How many values are there? See, the size of the array is 10, and so we can initialize the values as uh, up to 10. Now, this loop is beneficial because here the values are increasing by one only. So you can use a loop, but there are certain cases when the values are not fixed that uh, uh, how, in what range they will increase in. Like you can write two, three, five, or nine, or zero. Maybe uh, this uh, thing can, should happen. So in that case, you can't use loop, okay, because the values are not increasing in a proper manner. So you can either initialize like this, okay, or you can take from the user side. Now, this thing you also can write. But here, what is the drawback? We have declared the size of the array as 10. So what it will do? It will take uh, 10 size in the memory, but it will allocate only five values. So these five memories are wasted. So to just remove this wastage, you can simply write here nothing. You can also write like that. If these are n in third bracket, there is nothing, and then you can write the values. So you can write here any value. What the array will do? It will take its size as the inputs are given. Okay, so time to time, uh, according to the input, it will take its size. Now, this is one dimensional array or one D array, but there are some two D arrays also. Like if you want to print. Or if you want to operate with matrix, like this is the, for example, matrix, which have some rows as well as some columns. 
okay so if in certain situation if you have to calculate uh, with matrix then you can use this 2d array so how you can write 2d array like in i okay the name and here for example i have written 3 and 3 so what is the meaning of this number of row is 3 this is the one row two row third row one two three and the number of column is three and you can write like that one 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 comma two comma two comma two three comma three comma three so also you can write like this so the meaning of this line is this is a two dimensional array the name of the array is i and there is three rows and three columns and what are the values value is this so this thing denotes that these are the values for the first row these are the values for the second row and these are the values of the third row so in this way you can write also 2d array so if there are some questions of matrix multiplication or addition find out the summation then you can take 2d array and do your operation now there are also some other thing uh, for example, uh, this is the very simple program which I'll show you for uh, just uh, printing the values of the array. Now, uh, for example, just think that there are some values in the array. Okay. And uh, uh, there are some zeros, there are some other positive numbers. And what is our task? Our task is to arrange the numbers, uh, the non zero elements in the first part of the array and after the zeroth element. So, how you can do it? So, for example, the numbers are fixed. We are taking one nine eight four zero zero. So this is the fixed and what is our task we have to arrange all the numbers means we have to shift all the zeros in the end of the array so now we are writing any uh, predefined function so this is the name of the function we write the code This loop is for assessing the elements. Because we have to uh, the access to every element. So we are uh, writing the loop in title to zero i less than n i plus plus. And we have to calculate here n. Okay. Now then zero. Now we have to write the code for the reorder function. Right reorder. Okay, a comma n. So in this are a, in this are n. A equal to zero. So uh, here we are going to write the function for moving all the zeros to the end of the array, and uh, 
this is one uh, flag value or you can say temporary value which basically store the index of the next available position okay so index of the next available position means uh, because uh, for example if there is some elements in an array so there are some spaces which is next available means free so uh, first of all it is zero because we are starting from the zero so this is free next for each element again you have to execute another loop So if a i or a th zeroth position not equal to zero, then we will move to the next position k plus plus equal to k a i. Now again we have to execute another loop. So for There is a semicolon at the end of line. Ma'am, there is a semicolon in the seventh line uh, in for loop. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, there is a semicolon in the seventh loop uh, in the seventh okay, line okay, for loop. Okay. 
now see uh, now the values are arranged uh, in which they were supposed to be okay so you can see all the non zero elements are firstly uh, shifted to the left side then all the elements are zero uh, so here you can see that total three loops are used so this loop is for what this loop is for basically checking if the elements are zero or not so if it is not zero means the base element then what it will do it will increase the next available position so this k you can say that this is for the next by level position Uh, so like that if there are some question that you have to like find out all the uh, element uh, one and you have to shift it uh, shift it in the uh, last part or after all the elements then you can simply write uh, not equal to one means uh, those elements were not equal to one we can shift it first then we can write all the elements of one so like that so uh, these are uh, one thing now uh, if you have like like some question that find out the summation of 2d array or 2d matrix then you can uh, do it uh, what i have shown you as you can in 2d okay now uh, you can also work with character array this is an integer array like that you can also work uh, work with character array so what is a character array character array means uh, like uh, you have writing m n n i t so this is a character array means uh, this m n n i t and all the all the letters are treated as a separate character so this is for character array but there are certain situations where we have to operate with lines okay or there are some words two word three word then we can say that this is one line so in that cases you can write like m n n i t allahabad now what is the difference between these two we can say that this is the character this these are the characters but this is one sentence now whenever uh, we just want to operate with characters we can do by character array but there are some lines then we can say this is a string so in string all the words uh, or the combination of words are treated as one line but how will computer know that uh, what is the size of the like string or how it will come to know that, that the line is ended so there is the concept of null character this slash zero is known as the null character so what is the meaning of null character whenever our compiler uh, just work with a string and it will come to this point okay then uh, it will understand that yes the line is finished and now we are going to the next line or whatever now so uh, so for the storing this line okay we have to allocate some space because if you want to store this character then five five spaces okay sufficient means n five is sufficient but for storing this line you have to 1 2 3 4 5 then for space there is also one space is required so 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and then for the null character now sometimes it may happen that you forget to add this null character but then also there is no issue because our compiler will automatically add this uh, null character okay uh, so but we have to take the space for it okay or if you don't define the uh, space at the first time then there is no problem your compiler will automatically increase the space as required so uh, let's start with a very basic program program to read a string
see me fairy this is the declaration this is the reading of the string and this is for printing means we are not taking any value from the keyboard uh, in fact in the value from the keyboard but we are not using in the program Rather than we are printing in the screen itself. So you can check it here. So see, here you can write MNNIT. And the same thing will be printed. Means we are just uh, we are defining the screen as we did for character array and uh, any integer value. Then we are just scanning it and printing it. So this is very basic example. Now, uh, if you want to pass the string to a function, like we pass the uh, array to a function, uh, same thing. If you want to pass the string to a function, then how can you do it? So character string. A string is a character or combination of characters. So you have to define as character. Character string and uh, we are not defining any size. So we are writing MNNIT. And we are not adding any null character, but it will add it automatically. Now. print string so as we are going to pass this character array to a user defined function so we are passing this string to this function okay so we have to write this function void print string character string In pair, this we just uh, <coughs> pass in this MNIT Allahabad. So same thing is printed. Okay, and same also you can see that null character is not printed as well as it is not given. But this thing is automatically added by the compiler as well as automatically uh, removed uh, from the program before printing. Okay, so this is a simple uh, way that how we can pass this. Now, there are some predefined function of string. Like uh, you have used some predefined math function like power, square root. In the same manner, there are some predefined function. One is strcpy. STRCPY meaning is string copy. Means if you want to copy one string to another, then you can use this function. S1, comma, S2. So what is the meaning of this function? We are basically copy string S2 to S1. So if there are some contents of S1 is already being present, it will be erased and the new content will be the content of S2. So this is for copy, simple copy paste. Okay. Uh, so S1, S2, then STR, CAP. String concatenate. What is the meaning of string concatenate? Here we are concatenating two strings, S1 and S2. Okay, so whatever the string of S1 and S2, they will be concatenated and stored in S1. Then STR, LEN, S1. String length. If you want to find out the length of any string, you can simply write strlen, strcmp, string compared, s1 comma, s2. So for what this is, this is for comparing between two strings. So uh, if s1 and s2 is equal, so you can write 
if s1 and s2 is equal then zero and it will return this function will return zero but if s1 less than s2 then less than zero means if the size of uh, s1 is less than s2 then the function will return any negative value less than zero means any negative value but if s1 greater than s2 then greater than zero means if s1 is greater than s2 then this function will return any positive number greater than zero okay so these are some function but there are also some other functions so for now we are just going to operate with these functions okay so let's see how this function is working Uh, whenever we are using any uh, library function, mathematics library function, that what we have to uh, declare hash include net dot h. In the same way, here we are going to use the predefined function of string. So uh, here you have to write the header file hash include string dot h. Okay. Now you can use all the function. So, so first of all we are using this uh, first function str cpy string copy and we are copying str1 to str3 so what is the content of str3 now hello because this thing is copied to str3 now str c string concatenate string concatenate st1 to str2 so what is the content of str1 now this is hello world and same thing see no space is added as well as no end of line is printed okay because uh, after zero or after o there is no new line okay or no space but there is null character but null character is not printed so it is printed as altogether now there is another function len str len str1 so what we want to print the length of str1 
okay so this is 10 okay the length of str1 is now 10 so again the end of the line is not counted so the length is 10 so this is some way to use some predefined function now uh, this is one function right uh, string length str len this is a predefined function but if you don't want to uh, wants to use this function then also you can write your code okay so let's see how to do that so what is the concept here we know that uh, when we come to know that the string is ended when we uh, found a null character so we'll uh, execute one loop and we are searching for the null character so when the null character will be found then we can say that yes the string is ended and we can easily calculate the size okay so let's see string so here the space is not counted because we did not uh, do the code for space so after this the program is not taking the space and this character so it is counted here so or you can uh, be like this if it is hello then it is easy to understand for you now so length of the string is five so why the loop is started with zero so i is zero and s i not equal to null so if the value is not equal to null means there are certain other characters or null characters so it will increase in the value of i so again the next thing it is not null again it is increasing Again, it is increasing. Again, it is increasing. Now, here it will find that it is null. So, length of string is printed as 5. Okay, and it is written 0. So, this way also we can find out the length of any string. Okay, but if it is not mentioned in your code that you have to write uh, the uh, function uh, or you can't use your library function, you have to write your own function, then you can write. Otherwise, there is no need to write because you can simply call the function which is freely available. Okay. Now, uh, as because uh, we have studied uh, two classes assignment here, so today you have to submit uh, two assignment. So this first assignment is based on uh, function. So you can see here all the questions are based on function. Okay. Uh, write a function sum deep that finds the sum of divisor of a number. So uh, means you have to create your own user defined function by the name of sum div and you have to find out the divisor. So here uh, explanation is given that what is the meaning of a divisor. Okay. Uh, but then you have to write a program to print all the perfect numbers in a given range. Means a range will be given. For example, divisors of 36 are what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 18. 
a number is called perfect if the sum of divisors of that number is equal to the number okay means uh, we have to uh, summation the divisors then if the both the numbers are equal the main number and the summation of the divisors then this is the perfect number for example 28 is a perfect number since 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 14 is equal to 28 so this is the condition so you have to print all the perfect numbers in a given range so you have to take a particular range from the user side then you have to calculate write a recursive function to find the sum of digits of a number okay like if the number is 1 2 3 then you have to find out 1 plus 2 plus 3 write a recursive function to find the factorial of a given number okay uh, and uh, Given three variables x, y, z, write a function to circularly shift their values to right. So, what is the uh, meaning of shift? Example is given if x equal to 5, y equal to 8, z equal to 10. So, after circularly shift, uh, means after one uh, shift, you can say the new values will be what? y equal to 5, z equal to 8, and x equal to 10. So this thing, this is for one shift. For another shift, again the values will be changed. So call the function with variables a, b, c to circularly shift values. Call the function with variables a, b, c means with arguments. Okay. So means you have to create this function with arguments. Next question number five. A positive integer is entered through the keyboard write a function to find the binary equivalent of this number using recursion. So all of you know uh, uh, what what is the binary equivalent of any decimal number, any positive number also you can say any decimal number. So you can find out what is the binary equivalent of that number. Write a program to obtain the prime factors of a positive integer after throw the keyboard using a function. So what are the prime factors? For example, prime factors of 24 are 2, 2, 2, and 3. Okay. And uh, for 35, because 35, uh, if we divide by 2, then uh, there will be some like remainder 3, also remainder 4, also remainder. So then you have to find divide by 5. So 5 into 7 is 35. So you have to find out all the numbers of prime factors of any particular value okay uh, then you have to print it and the last question is write a program to implement power function so till now you have used the power function uh, which is already there in our library now you have to write a on function okay so this is this is the assignment of uh, function and there are some question of recursion uh, so for now i will upload this assignment but there is also another assignment which is of array and string Okay, so I will upload that assignment also. So there are also some questions, uh, 13 to 14 questions, uh, I think there. No, 10 questions. Okay, and uh, you have to solve it. And then uh, within the specific time, you have to submit it. So for now, just wait. I'm uploading the assignment. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Sorry, your voice is not clear. Ma'am, the CP lab viva will be on 13th. Yes, tell me. Naman. Ma'am, I, uh, I am asking whether it will be on Monday or next Monday. No, no, most probably uh, this coming Monday. Is there any chance you can shift it to the next week? 
because we have a lot of assignments and quiz also. Uh, see, it is not decided actually by us. Uh, it will come from the higher authority. So we can't uh, change the date. But uh, it is always uh, suggested uh, from the college itself that uh, all of you please try to conduct all the examination in the first week. Because second week is reserved basically for the other works. Okay, because uh, maybe due to network connection, someone is unable to give his viva. Okay, so that's why we reserve the next week. So uh, for now, just think that uh, it is 90% sure that your exam will be conducted in coming week. But if uh, for any reason it may not happen, then we'll conduct it in the next to next week. Okay, ma'am. And uh, when will we get the schedule of viva and other exams? You will get your schedule, uh, I think, uh, by Wednesday. Okay, uh, today we have some meeting, and in the meeting we'll decide uh, all the things, and then we'll create one uh, notice and all that. Then you will get get it. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Um. Uh, will there be the questions from uh, computer architecture in the lab viva? Computer architecture means, I think, uh, uh, in your first lab, uh, I have shown you some basic concepts of computer. So these things are there, but not exactly computer architecture. OK, you okay, have to answer from basic things. From... Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, from the first classes. Yes, yes. OK, ma'am. 